So this is going to be our last video on trig equations. It's probably the most difficult question. Uh, there's just a little bit more to it than the other videos. So I'll read through it first anyway. So question three, solve cos of two theta is equal to minus a half for uh, theta is between zero and 360 degrees. So that's what this means here. Theta is between zero and 360 degrees. Um, yeah, so the, the, more, the reason this one's more difficult is a little bit more to it. So we have cos of two theta. So that's one of the things. And also this bit here. So I'll go through it and I'll uh, explain what each bit means. So I guess I'll just start. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna write cos of two theta is equal to minus a half. So the first step is still the same. And that means two theta is equal to the inverse cos of a half. Sorry, that should be just plus a half. Uh, so remember you forget out the minus for this step here. And then you find that cos, the inverse cos of a half is equal to 60 degrees, okay? And I'm just gonna write point here. So don't, don't divide by two yet. Don't divide by two, okay? So a lot of people will say, oh, if two theta is equal to 60 degrees, then theta is equal to 30 degrees, and that is true, but you don't divide by two yet, you divide by two later, and I'll show you what I mean. Next thing we're gonna do, so next step, I'll go in yellow. So that was, say, step one, and I'm not going to number them. Then step two, scroll down a little bit, is, um, I'm just going to draw a little circle, A, S, T, and C. And in this one here, we have cos of 2t is equal to minus a half, so that means it's negative. So cos is negative in the second and the third. Yeah, because obviously all of them are positive in the first quadrant, so all of them are positive, that's A, and then cos is positive in the fourth, so that means it has to be negative in the second and the third, so I'm gonna write that then. Cos is negative second and third, okay? And uh, let's write quadrant. So remember, this is our reference angle as well, so I didn't write that that time, I actually just write that reference angle yeah so next I'll go purple the next step then is to draw our angles in so I'll just draw a circle so we have 60 degrees and it's in the second and the third quadrant so um, 60 degrees in the second quadrant will be like that and the third quadrant will be like that okay so this is our 60 and 60, and quite small. And now remember when we're measuring this, we always measure it from the positive x-axis. So it's going to be this one here and this one here, yeah? So I'm gonna say two theta, remember it's two theta, not theta, is equal to the first one is gonna be 180 minus 60. So 180 minus 60, so that's how big the angle is gonna be. That's going to be 120 degrees. And also 2 theta is going to be equal to 180 plus 60. 180 plus 60. And that's going to be equal to 240 degrees. So there are two options. Um, and then the last step then is to find the general solution. Yeah. So general solution then 2 theta is equal to 120 plus, and remember the period for cos is, two, is 360 degrees, so it's gonna be n by 360. And then as well, it's gonna be is equal to 240 plus n by 360. So everything else was pretty much the same, yeah, so far. And this is where the two theta comes in. So now you have to wait till this step to divide by two. So now I'll do this in dark blue. So that means theta is gonna be equal to 60 degrees, because 120 divided by two is gonna be 60 plus n by 180, because again, then 360 degrees divided by two is gonna be 180, so you divide both of these by two, and then you do the same for over here as well, so now we're gonna have 120 degrees plus n by 180. So that's our general solution. Okay, so you see that? So always wait until the very last step, and then you divide by whatever number it is, because it changes the period as well, how often it occurs. So that's almost it done. Now the last thing we need to look at is, go back up, this bit here. Uh, theta is between zero and 360 degrees. 
So basically what we have to do is we have to list off all of these numbers that are between zero and 360. So I'll go to yellow for that. So the first one is I'm gonna say n is equal to zero. So that means theta is either equal to 60 degrees or 120 degrees, yeah? Because uh, n is gonna be zero, so it'll cancel out these out. So the next one, as we say, n is equal to one. So this is just kind of a methodology you have to get used to. It's gonna be 60 degrees plus 180, because if it's uh, n is equal to one, then one times 180 is 180. So anyway, 60 plus 180, that's gonna be 240 degrees. And the second one then is gonna be 120 plus 180, it's gonna be 300 degrees. Yeah, so then we try n is equal to two. We're gonna get theta is equal to 60 plus two times 180, which is gonna be 360. So our answer is gonna be 420. And then this one here, it's gonna be quite big. It's gonna be 120 plus 360. So that's gonna be 480 degrees, okay? But if you go back up to the top, it's asking us for where theta is between zero and 360 degrees. This will be less than 360 degrees. Both of these are greater than 360 degrees. So we get rid of them. And means our final answer is theta is equal to 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 240 degrees, and 300 degrees. So there are four possible answers here for this particular question. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It's the same method you're gonna follow every time if they give you either a number before the theta or else if they give you a, a kind of a range where theta has to be in. Yeah, so it's the same method normally. You just don't divide by two here. So you get your reference angle. You find out where cause is negative in this question. So it's second and third. You draw your little angles in and you figure out what they are measured from the positive x-axis. You find your general solution. And then in this case, you have to divide by two. And then if they ask you for a specific range, then you just try n is zero, n is one, n is two, n is three, etc., until you reach kind of the limit, yeah? So that's all there is for that question. I'm gonna show you one other little trick. So give me two seconds. Yeah, so I have that second example written out over here. We'll go to the side. Okay, so we have a new question here. Find the general solution of two cos three theta is equal to root three, where theta is between zero and two pi. Okay, so the differences with this question here is, one, it's in radians, okay? And then as well, there's a number before cause. We haven't seen that before. So I'm gonna get you guys to try and answer this, but I'll give you a quick hint because you might not have seen this too before. So the first thing you're gonna do, the first step is gonna be, so you're right, two cos three theta is equal to root three. And that means, so basically you divide everything by two, so you're gonna get cos of three theta then is equal to root three over two. And now you're in a form you're probably more familiar with. So if you ever see a number before the cause, you just divide it across uh, and then you continue as normal. So I'm gonna get you guys to try and try this question. So it's gonna be exactly the same as this method uh, we did in this one over here, except this time it's in radians and obviously it's a different question as well. So good luck with that. Uh, give us your answers down in the comments and we'll let you know how you get on. And that's it for trigonometric equations. We're gonna look at trigonometric identities in the next few videos. So we'll see you then.